These are the original designs for this, these eight panels. Here are six of them. And they've been done over about a year's time. I think the first one I did is this one right up here, which shows in a kind of abstract fashion some trains going by, sort of generic trains with containers or some sort of truck. Uh, um, and in the background is something that looks like the, uh, the Marta train going by. The idea with these is to make them really simple so that if they, so when they were put up in these 192 separate foot square tiles, that the separations between the tiles wouldn't really interrupt the flow of the picture. So that all the shapes are pretty simple here. When I start a line of some kind like this, it goes on for a long time. So even though it's stopped when the tile ends, you still get the idea of this continuation. Some of them are a little more complicated than others. I began to do them in more recent ones like this. Fidlin John, Moonshine Kate got a little more complex. But even here, you can see I've left off the details of their faces because I didn't want to put an eye or something in there that might get split in half by one of the joints of the tile. So everything here, too, is really simplified as much as I can. Even the violin bow, I had to leave just white, the white glaze showing through because if I started to fill that in, it might begin to look like, you know, get mixed up with the tile joints. Uh, to make these, each one of these pictures has an overlay of a plastic sheet with the tiles laid out on it in a grid put over it. As you've, as you've seen, Esther then copies several of these tiles using the grid marks as the guide for the way each tile is going to look. And as she said, the individual tiles begin to look like works of art in themselves, like some sort of plates or something. We've gotten, so we really admire each of these little sections. It's like a work of art on its own. Uh, these also go in very different places on the wall. It turns out that the simplest ones, like the ones at the top and this one, have gone on the places where the wall, the panel is the highest. So at the point where this one is, I think, the wall is something like 35 feet high, and this one is about, well, 15 to 20 feet off the ground before it even starts. So you've got to look up at it. You can't even see it very well driving by. You have to stand at some distance. Others, like these two that are more complicated, are much closer to the ground. You could actually walk up among the bushes and stand. This is almost level with the ground, and the top of the wall is like this. Here's a picture of the wall being built itself. And you'll see, when you compare this with the actual panel that's out on the street, on the wall there, that it's had writing at it that says this facility was built by people from Cabbage Town. When I did this, I gave Esther a certain amount of freedom and the people actually painting the tile to do some of their own thing. Like I didn't tell Esther where to put the words or what to say, so she decided on her own how to put it in. In fact, all of these, because of their simplicity and sort of looseness and abstractness, give the tile painter uh, a lot of chance to sort of put their own feelings into it. What you see here is Gary wedging up the clay. What is basically happening is that the air bubbles are being knocked out of the clay so that when you put it through the slab roller, you don't have air holes that pop and uh, defect, make a defect in our squares that we cut out. That's basically what it's doing. We always reuse the clay after we cut out, which you'll see in a minute. Yeah. Now he's going to cut it into three, into three layers so that I can put a few slab roll. Why don't you just bring that one to me, Gary? See how nice it is? Nice and smooth and ready. Go through the slab roll. That's what you call this is doing it right here. And we 
flatten it out to make it as much one big slab before we even put it through the roller so that we get a smooth run of clay. And after Gary wedges him, he always bags him up in clay like in the bags the clay up like this so that it's ready for me when I need it. Fingers a little bit, just even up edges. 